So uh, now let, let us start looking at uh, functions defined on real line. Okay. So we are going to look at now next looking at functions f which will be defined in some uh, domain subset of say r n to r. Let us look at uh, what I want to do to motivate that let us look at uh, the following situation suppose C is a point belonging to R n such that let me write every ball every open ball at C intersects D. So, this is uh, I am assumption I am making. So, what does it mean? What I am saying is C is a point. So, I think let me mention C may belong to D or may not be in D. F is a function with a domain D. Look at a point C that point C may or may not be in the domain function may or may not be defined we do not bother about it whether it is defined or not. But the domain should have the property there are points close to C uh, close to C in the domain where the function is defined. So, one way of ensuring that is every neighborhood of the point C intersects D right. For example, at C I can take a ball of radius 1 over n small or any epsilon that should intersect D. So, points close to C are in the domain that is assumption I want to make. The function is defined at points as close to C as you want, but we do not know whether function is defined at the point C or not. Right? So, that is the situation I am having. The question is by looking at the values of the function at points close to C where it is defined, right? can I predict some suitable value for the function at the point C? Is the question clear to everybody? Yes or not clear? So, let me repeat again. I want to look at the problem f is a function. Okay, in some domain, I am given and C is a point okay, which may or may not be in the domain, it may or may not be defined, we forget whether it is defined or not. Okay. But positively the function is defined at points close to C, how close, as close you want, right? function is defined. Right? So, I know the behavior of the function at points close to C that is idea. I want to predict what could be the behavior of the function at the point C by looking at its behavior at points nearby. So, that is a prediction problem I am looking at. I am trying to predict a suitable value for the function at the point C by looking at its values at points close to it. Right? So, what could be a way of doing that? One way could be that let us try to come closer and closer to C, approach C, right? And close to C, the function is defined. So, look at the value of the function at points close to it, look at those images. Okay? Those images, if they are coming closer to something, then that could be a suitable value for the function to be predicted. Is it a natural thing to do? Is it okay? Intuitively very clear. So, how do I approach a point in D? I can take a sequence right in D which is converging to C. 
then the points of the sequence will be coming close to C as close as you want, right? Is it okay? So what we that's why I put the condition that for close to C every neighborhood must intersect. So there are sequences which are coming to C. Look at so let us look at a sequence. One way is so I have not written what is the problem. So let me write the problem. So the problem I am looking at is uh, predict a suitable value of f at c by looking at values of of f at points close to c so that is what we are trying to do so uh, one way could be so one way is let an belong to d and an come to c as right look at I am trying to predict a value of the function at the point C. At a point close A n, this is the value, right? So look at and ask and analyze. Does f of A n come closer to a value? What is the meaning of that? Converges to some value alpha. so what we are saying is look at sequences in the domain which converge to c right and look at the image sequence for those points f of an if they all converge to some value then that value could be a suitable value right as i am approaching the point c i am approaching the value alpha but it shouldn't happen one sequence a n is converging to the c and b n is also converging but f of a n actually converges to some value and f of b n converges to some other value then we will be in a problem which value is a suitable value so we should have for every sequence a n converging to the point c f of a n should converge to the same value then that value will be a suitable value for the function right at that point c so we are trying to predict by looking at the behavior at nearby points we are not concerned what is the value at the point c is it okay yes clear the problem and if that happens one says the function has a limit at the point c so let us put a definition we say f has limit at say x is equal to c if for every sequence a n in the domain a n converging to c f of a n converges to alpha right we write limit x going to c f of x is equal to l so keep in mind limit is something to which the function is approaching as you approach the point in the domain so naturally conditions are there should be a sequence at least one sequence converging to that point in the domain otherwise what are you going to predict you are not going to predict anything right so close to c there should be points in the domain as close as you want so that you can analyze the behavior of the function at points close to c and once that data is given 
I look at the behavior of the image sequences. If all the image sequences converge to the same value, then we say that is the value <coughs> the function should take, right? And we say <coughs> mathematically that function has a limit as x goes to c, okay? Clearly, function need not be defined at that point. It is a suitable value for the function by looking at its behavior nearby. That is the way we should understand limit of a sequence, right? And that is the way we have understood. For example, for a sequence, what was the limit? For a sequence a n, the limit a n need not be equal to c at all, right? Only they are coming closer and closer, right? That was the thing. Sometimes they may be equal to the value that doesn't matter, right? But we don't bother about whether elements of the sequence are taking that value of where it is going to converge or not. Same for the function, the limit is something which we want to predict a suitable value, where the function is coming closer and closer to some value. As in the domain, you come closer to the value c and that closeness mathematically is measured by a sequence in the domain converging to c, that is a n is converging to c, so a n's are coming close to c, f of a n's are coming close to some value alpha, whatever b, right. So if you want to look at a picture in R n say R 2, so this is the domain and uh, here is the value alpha. So for any point, so for example, uh, the point c could be here. So if you take a sequence x n which is converging to c, so look at f of x n, right, it could be here, it could be here, but they are all coming closer to the value alpha. And you see in R n, there could be many ways of approaching c, there could be many paths, right, but whatever way, whichever way x n is converging, we know how to x n converge absolute value of or the <coughs> magnitude of x n minus c goes to 0. We know that the distance goes to 0, right. So the path is not important, it is the closeness which is important, right. And in case the function is defined at the point c, supposing it so happens that the point c is in the domain, that means the function is given some value that may or may not be same as the value that we are trying to predict, right. So if the value we are predicting for the function at the point C by looking at its behavior at nearby points happens to be same as the value of the function at that point C, then it is natural to say there is a continuity in the behavior of the function. Whatever we are trying to predict function behaves nicely, there is a continuity in, it, in this behavior. So that gives us a notion of what is called continuity of a function at a point. If the value we are predicting is the actual value for, taken by the function. So continuity of the function at a point means the point is in the domain, right? That means f of c is defined and for every sequence xn converging to c, the limit is equal to f of, right? So value predicted is the actual value taken. That is how you should understand what is called the continuity of a function at a point. All of you have done these limits and continuity in your previous courses, but just this perspective you should keep in mind. So let me define, so limit we have defined. So let us define what is called, so definition, f defined in a domain in R n to R, C belongs to D, F is continuous at X is equal to C, if limit C going to um, X going to point is C, F of X is equal to exists and is the value of the function at that point, F of C value predicted is the actual value taken. So that is continuity. 
And now uh, you all must have done this kind of theorems, namely if the limit, you see now where what you are looking at, we are looking at some property of functions now, right? So we are, <clears throat> so our uh, aim, is, uh, we, we, our domain of uh, attraction or investigation is the class of functions defined on real line or Rn. Now you can add functions. So what are the operations possible on this class? You can add functions, you can multiply functions, you can divide functions, you can compose functions, right? And the theorems are about the limits which you have already done. And if f has a limit at a point c, g has a limit at a point c, then f plus g has a limit at the point c and the limit is equal to sum of the limits, right? Similarly, difference, product, you can do also quotient. You have to keep in mind that the limit of the quotient is not equal to 0 as in sequences we have done that. So those are called algebra of limits. Limit of the sum is equal to sum of the limits, limit of the product is equal to product of limits and so on, right? <clears throat> I'm just recalling you what you might have already done. So translate this for continuous functions. If f and g are continuous, f plus g is continuous because the limit is equal to sum of the limits, right? Product of continuous functions is continuous. Composition of composite functions is continuous. Yes? Let me just indicate. So supposing f is a function and say that and g is another function that f plus f composite g is defined on some domain, right? I want to say that is continuous at x is equal to c. So f composite g at c is defined. So that is assumption, right? For composite of functions, it is not always that f composite g is defined whenever the range of g is in the domain of f, it will be defined, right? To show continuity, let xn converge to c. We want to analyze f composite g of xn, right? What is that equal to by definition? It is f of g of xn, right? And where is xn converging? To c. But I should have now g of xn converging somewhere, otherwise I can't say anything. So condition is if f composite g is defined and g is continuous at c, where domain and f is continuous at the g of x n s, then this is continuous and this will converge to f composite g of c. So appropriately you can put conditions f composite g, right? So what should happen? I am looking at the point c, limit at the point c. So first of all f composite g should be defined, right? First G is operating and then F is operating. If Xn is converging to C, look at the image that is G of Xn, that should converge to G of C, right? So G of Xn is converging to G of C, F is defined there and if F is continuous at the point G of C, then F composite Gn will converge to f composite g at the point c. Is that okay? So those are the appropriate conditions that you should put by looking at what is to be done. So conditions are not put just for the sake of being happy, it is because each one is required at some stage, right? Is that clear to everybody what I am saying? All of you have done this, but I am just revising and trying to make you understand how you should understand something, right? Okay. So we will not spend time on composition of, uh, on these properties of continuous functions and so on. What we are going to look at is some properties of continuous functions. So let me look at
Algebra of limits, algebra of continuous functions, I, we are assuming that you have all gone through and if you have not gone to through or you would like to be more comfortable, do it again, right? Look at the proofs of limit of the sum is equal to sum of the limits and so on, okay? Be uh, happy so that you understand. Be, I think the other way around, understand and be happy. You will be always be happy if you understand, okay? Right, so properties. So what we are going to look at is, we are going to look at properties of continuous functions vis-a-vis -vis those special properties of subsets of real line. For example, if the function is defined on an interval, okay, domain is an interval, what can you say about the range of the function? Can I say it is an interval? If the domain is an interval, can I say the range is an interval? Or Another property, if the domain is a close bounded interval, can I say the range should be a close bounded interval? So such kind of properties we want to look at of continuous functions. So continuous functions vis-a-vis -vis special properties of subsets of the domain. So the first one is let f be a function defined on i to r where f is continuous, uh, okay, why write where? B. So let F be continuous, continuous, such that uh, be continuous. Okay, let me just write. There's no such that meaning. If I is an interval, implies F of I is an interval. I want to look at this property. So let us see how does the proof work. I want to look at, so I interval f of i is an interval. That is the question we are looking at. How do I prove f of i is an interval? How can I prove? The only way we know is take two points in that set, take a point in between, that should also be in that set. So let, let us take alpha belong to f of i, beta belongs to f of i and Either alpha will be less than beta or, right? So let us write and uh, alpha less than beta. Let alpha less than gamma less than beta. Take a point in between, right? We are taking two points in f of i and we are looking at a point in between. Claim we want to analyze gamma belongs to f of i. Right? Now, what is the meaning of saying alpha belongs to f of i means what? Trying to understand. That means alpha is in the range of the function. You see what, what we, are, we are trying to analyze the range and we know only something about the domain that is, is interval. So somehow, I have to shift my attention to the domain and use the fact that domain is a interval. So the proof has to be in such a way, I have to drive my proof in such a way that it goes to the domain somehow and then use that fact. So the, I can do something there only. So how do I go to the domain? It belong implies there is some x belonging to i such that f of x is equal to alpha. Beta belongs to f of i. That is same as saying there exists a point. So let us call it x1 and call it f of uh, x2. There is a point x2 where the value beta is is equal to beta.
at a point x1 because it is alpha is in the range so it will some value some point x1 should be mapped to alpha other point x2 should be mapped to beta now x1 x2 both are in i so now the idea is so let me draw a picture probably that will be uh, I'm, I'm i'm going to give you a picture which is only sort of real line so here is the domain here is the function here is x1 here is x2 right here is a value alpha and here is the value beta and here is the value uh, okay and gamma is in between so here is the point gamma right now uh, i can directly work with alpha beta gamma and so on straightly proof will be understandable more okay it doesn't matter so let me uh, i think probably do it straight away here itself let me write so draw this line so what i want to show aim is to show that gamma belongs to f of i that means what there is a point in the domain where the value gamma is taken there is a is it okay so so i want so we want to show that there is this is the value gamma and what is geometrically if you look at what is the meaning of saying that the function will take the value gamma somewhere i am intuitive notion of a function if you will have a picture of the function what does it mean what is the picture of a function you have all done calculus what is the picture of a function that is the graph of the function graph is the picture of the function right and if you want to say that the value gamma is taken somewhere by the function that means the graph must intersect that line somewhere that is a geometric way of saying so you want somewhere right the graph the graph should cut somewhere at a point that is a point we are looking at right that is a point we are looking at so how do i capture that point that is a question i want to capture this point right in the domain so how do i capture it that is a question so now you see uh, one way of capturing this point is see look at uh, at this point the value is alpha right x1 so what i can do is i can start looking at points bigger than x1 right where the value is this value alpha is less than gamma so look at all the points where the value is less than gamma right and try to look at the largest of these values in the domain see i am going to look at the domain only is it okay so look at the largest so possibly that value so at this point the value still remains below gamma below the line at the point next also it remains below gamma so look at the largest possible value in the domain bigger than x1 where the graph stays below that line right so if i have the largest value that means after that it will it has to cross over otherwise it will not be the largest so that is one way of analyzing the proof so what should be we do so the proof starts by looking at or so let us look at the set a all x belonging to this x1 x2 such that f at x is less than gamma is it okay because so not x1 belongs to a right x1 belongs to a is that okay because 
the value at x1 is alpha okay so a is not empty i am trying to look at the largest value i have to ensure the largest value exists so how do i ensure the largest value exists the only way i know is lub property of real line right so x1 belongs to a implying a is non empty x right a is bounded above s yes? why it is bounded above because it is inside x1 x2 right we are choosing points between x1 and x2 only so it is bounded above so implies implies gamma equal to lub uh, 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 not gamma something else i should write because gamma i have already used so let us write c equal to lub of a exists right now where is c not what is the value at the so i have taken and i have got any point c which is lub of these points where the value is less than gamma my aim is to show the value at c is equal to gamma right the value at the point c is equal to gamma so first of all look at note c is lub of something so i am saying this implies f of c is less than or equal to gamma why is that c is lub of a set a being the lub of a set a there must be a sequence in a converging to lub right there must be a sequence converging in lub right so i am not writing the proof i am just try to understand what i am saying c is lub so that means what that means there must be a sequence in a converging to lub we have already seen that right c minus 1 over n cannot be there must be a point all that we have done so there is a sequence in a converging to c right so there is a sequence so what is the value at that point of the sequence they are in a so f of c is f of that element of the sequence is less than or equal to less than gamma f is continuous so image must have the property so let me write here there exists a sequence an belonging to a an converging to c implies f of an converging to f of c because of continuity right f of an because it belongs to a is less than or equal to gamma implies f of c is less than or equal to gamma that is a proof so we use continuity here okay so now what is the possibility so hence so what we are saying is that point c okay is bigger than or equal to x1 is less than or equal to x2 right This is less than or equal to because x2 is a upper bound, and this is lub, so it has to be less than or equal to x2. Now the question is, can c be equal to x2? What is the value? If c is equal to x2, what is the value at x2? That is beta, which is bigger than gamma. That cannot happen. because we just now said f of c is less than or equal to gamma so this c cannot be equal to x2 right so let us write uh no because f of x2 is equal to beta is bigger than gamma so x1 less than c less than x2 right it has to be uh okay but still we want to show that f of c is equal to 
gamma, it is less than or equal to gamma. If I can show it is also bigger than or equal to gamma, we are through, right? But this implies there is a sequence uh, B n such that C is less than B n less than x 2 and B n converging to C. Is that okay? Because if C is less than x 2, then there is a gap in between, right? I can always have a sequence coming to C from that side. And where are these B n's? And what can say our f of B n's? B n is on the right side of alpha, which is the supremum, where the value of the function is less than. So, it has to be bigger than or equal to, that is the only possibility. Alpha is the LUB of all points in x1, x2, where the value is strictly less than gamma. So, something bigger than LUB, at that point the value has to be bigger than or equal to gamma. Is that okay? Because B n bigger than uh, C. Is that okay or not okay? Here I am just, I am, look at the graph, you will understand it better. So, here is C and C is less than x2. So, there is B1, okay, and so on, Bn converging to C. What can be the value at f, f, f at, at this point? It has to be bigger because what is C? C is the least upper bound of all those points where the value is less than gamma, right? So, something bigger than that least upper bound, the value has to be bigger than or equal to gamma, right? So, these are, these are points here in this point. So, that means what? So, implies f of c by continuity again is bigger than or equal to gamma because f is continuous. Each element of the sequence b n, f of b n is bigger than gamma, b n is converging to c. So, where does f of b n converge? It converges to f of c by continuity. Right? Each B n is bigger than or equal to gamma. So, limit has to be also bigger than or equal to gamma. So, that, so this is second and the first one was it is less than or equal to. So, this is 1 and you can call this as 2 if you like. 1 and 2 imply f of gamma is equal to, or f of c is equal to gamma, sorry, not 0 f of c is equal to gamma and that finishes the case. So, we are not doing anything uh, surprising very naturally. What we are saying is, here is, in the, if you look at the picture, at this point the value is alpha. So, let me start traveling along this route. Go on moving till you remain below the graph and look at the largest value of this where you stay below, right? That must be the point where you cross over. That must be the point that you cross over. So, written mathematically, look at all the points in x1, x2 where the value f of x is less than gamma. That is a non-empty set less than or equal to gamma, right? Uh, uh, yes, that is a non-empty set it is bounded above by x2, so it must have a least upper bound and that least upper bound is the required one because everything on the right hand side will be bigger than or equal to. Here it is less than or equal to, that is why it has to be equal to gamma, right? So, that is one way of proving that if a function takes two values alpha and beta, then it takes every value in between. Another way of saying the same result, what we have shown? If i is an interval, f of i is a interval, right? But what is the meaning of saying in? So, if i is an interval, alpha and beta are two values, then every value in between also is taken, that is what we are showing, 
right. So, this theorem can also be interpreted as saying for a continuous function if two values are taken alpha and beta then every value in between also must be taken at some point. So, in that way it goes by the name of intermediate value property for continuous functions, right. So, the proof that image of an interval is the interval also gives you what is called intermediate value property, it is same. So, corollary if, yeah, uh, will, okay, what is the doubt? Where is Bn? Is it on the right side? Bn is on the right side of C. And what is C? Bn's don't belong to A. Who said Bn's belong to A? Bn is the set of those points in A where f of x is less than gamma. It is not all x1, x2. Look at the definition of A. What is A? x belonging to x such that f of x. So, for all points of A, f of x is less than gamma, right. And we are taking the supremum of it. Supremum of A is alpha. So, any point on the right side of alpha cannot be an element in A because alpha is the least upper bound of A. Right. So, if it is not in A at for any point f of x is less than gamma. So, it is not, it is outside. That means what? The value should be bigger than or equal to gamma. So, for all points on the right side of C, right, the value is bigger than or equal to gamma. Only we have to ensure that there are points on the right side. And for that, C cannot be equal to x2, right? Because f at C is less than or equal to gamma, we have just now shown f of C is less than or equal to gamma. So, C cannot be equal to x2 because the value at x2 is beta, which is bigger than gamma. So, there has to be a gap in between, that means C has to be strictly less than x2. So, it is an interval in between. So, take any sequence converging and that does the job, okay. So, I was writing another way of uh, this or a consequence of this whichever way you like. If f of x1 is equal to alpha, f of x2 is equal to beta and f is continuous in x1, okay. I am not saying x1 should be less than, it could be other way around, x2 could be less than x1. So, let us say x1 less than x2 or it will be other way around. Then there is a point C belonging to x1, x2, say that f of C uh, and gamma is, uh, if f is continuous for alpha less than gamma less than beta, there is a point C say that f of C is equal to gamma. So, if a continuous function takes two values alpha and beta, it must take every value in between, right. So, that is what is called intermediate value property. This is very useful result. For example, at some, you want to locate uh, where does the graph of a function, okay, let us first inter interpret this geometrically. Geometrically this says, if you are here and you want to go here, that is a value at alpha, there is a value at beta, right. If you want to go and every value must be taken, the, this value will not be taken if you say that you go up to here and then start your graph somewhere else. So, geometrically saying intermediate value property holds for continuous function means the graph of the function has no breaks. That is a geometric interpretation of this, right. So, continuity of a function at a point means if you start somewhere and domain is an interval then and you end somewhere then 
once you start drawing the graph you should not lift your pen or pencil whatever you are doing right to draw the graph you should continuously go on doing so there is no break in the graph of the function this is why it is important in calculus when you want to get a picture of the function this is the first tool which gives you a picture of the function right namely continuity implies there is no break in the graph of the function okay right so let us look at uh, some okay here is another way of proving this that is interesting okay so let us just look at at x1 at x2 here the value is some um, alpha here the value is something beta and here is uh, gamma in between right see we are trying to locate a point in between x1 and x2 where things cross over right so another very intuitive way of doing this is the following at x1 the value is alpha and x2 the value is beta right what i can try to do is look at the midpoint of this okay and look at the value at the midpoint so look at f of x1 plus x2 by 2 what are the possibilities either it is equal to gamma that is a place where actually the function crosses one possibility you are very lucky right or it is below or it is above only three possibilities right if it is cutting at that point the line gamma then we are through if not let us assume it is below so let us assume the value here it is still below okay now value at x2 is above so now let us only concentrate only in this part of the graph the original one at x1 it was below x2 it was above now i have shrunk my vision i know i don't forget about everything else look at only the midpoint and x2 at the midpoint the value is below at x2 value is above right so you see now i'm trying to capture that point kind of a thing now again i will look at the midpoint of that again possibility same either i hit the jackpot i get the value or it is below or it is above right so if it is below i continue that process and go on shrinking now if at this stage the value is above supposing at this stage i assume the value is below supposing it was above then i will concentrate only on this part so what i am doing is at x1 x2 x1 the value is less x2 the value is uh, x1 the value is less x2 the value is bigger cut it into half and keep only that half that at one end point the value is less other end point the value is more again cut it into half and see which one is working so go on shrinking this interval at one end point the value is less other end point the value is more so what you get you get a nested sequence of intervals such that at the left end point the value is less at the right end point the value is more and the intersection of all of them has to be a single point what will be the value at the single point it has to be equal to gamma because if i look at the left end points it should be less than or equal to gamma if i look at the right end points it should be bigger so they have to be same so this is called the bisection method of capturing a point making it smaller end so you can write down the i am not writing the proof it is second proof okay you can try to write out the proof yourself the basically the idea is x1 x2 at x1 the value is less x2 the value is bigger cut it into half either this half or this half will have the same property again at the left end point the value will be less at the right end point the value will be more go on doing it if you don't hit the jackpot in between then eventually you should capture that point right okay 